seated. Long ago, God spoke to our ancestors in many and various ways through the prophets. But in these last days, God has spoken to us by the Son, by God's Word made flesh. Christmas is a festival of incarnation, the celebration of the mystery of the infinite containing itself within the finite. We marvel at God choosing to become one of us, taking human form, subjecting God's own self to our frailties and our vulnerabilities, but also opening themselves to our joys and wonders and small comforts. In the incarnation, God is making a statement, a proclamation. So as we gather this Christmas morning to celebrate and worship, what do you hear God saying in that statement? Maybe what you hear most clearly is that God is with us. That whatever might come, despite, or maybe even because of, whatever we might do to distance ourselves from God's design for a harmonious and healthy creation, God has chosen to walk alongside us. As we wander in darkness away from the garden, the light goes with us. We may choose to go our own way, but God has covenanted with us that we will never go alone. Or maybe what you hear is the forgiveness of sins. Maybe in the child of Bethlehem, you see the living physical sign of God's mercy. When that child hung dying on a cross, he pronounced forgiveness on the ones who put him there. Even as he embodies the God who created all things, so does he embody the forgiveness of God that, continue, that God continues to extend to us who are off, so often undeserving of it and who so seldom extend that same forgiveness to each other. Or maybe the message in the manger for you is hope. Hope that God is still doing something, even when it seems like everything's falling down around us, even when we seem so very far from the future that God has promised. Jesus lived and breathed that hope. He carried that hope and shared it with the people around them who had lost theirs. And that hope created something bright in the darkness something real and tangible. It created a movement, a community, what some have even called a kingdom, in which no one was excluded or forgotten, a community that lived the reality of God's promise in the expectation of its fulfillment. Maybe the light shining in the darkness shows you how you want to live your own life. Maybe you look at Jesus and see the way to a world in which peace and justice reign. The truth of who we were created to be. The very essence of the life that we have been given since the beginning. Maybe Jesus is your teacher, your model, your guide. Maybe he is both the path and the pilgrim, leading us ever toward God. For me, as I come to this text this morning, I hear good news proclaimed by the angel in all of these things and more. Christmas is the festival of the incarnation, a celebration of God becoming a human child, being born of a human woman. But it is also the festival of our own rebirth as children of God. As Christ is born in flesh and blood, declares to us that we are born of God. The mystery of Christmas, I think, is that these aren't two separate things. God being born human and us being born of God. The mystery of the incarnation for me is not that God becomes human, but that we humans have always been, from the very beginning, filled with the life which is the light of all people. 
we have sometimes turned away from and rejected that light, but still it shines within us. The declaration I hear God making in Christ is not that God comes among us, but that God has always been among us. We sometimes treat Jesus as if he is above us, some demigod like Hercules that we could never aspire to be. But the whole message of the incarnation is that he is so very human. In fact, more human than we are. Because he lives from the light within him rather than turning away from it, as we so often do. We call him sinless, and maybe he is, but not, not because he never did anything wrong. If sin is the state of separation from God, then the condition, the condition of loving darkness more than light, then Jesus is the living sign that we can never be separated from that light, because that light is our life. God dwells in his humanity, and that is the truth from which he lives. Our humanity, our flesh, as it were, is God's home, God's tabernacle, God's dwelling place. Today we celebrate that this is what God has chosen it to be. Our humanity is not what separates us from God, it's what connects us to God, to the one who created it. I think that's what John means when he says that Jesus gives us the power to become children of God. He comes bearing the truth which sets us free from all the constructs that we would otherwise devote ourselves. Constructs like ethnicity or nationality or religion or race or class. He reminds us of our true parentage. We have been born not of blood, simply defined by tribes and clans and races. We do not owe our lives to the wrangling ideologies that lay claim to our flesh. Nor have we been born of the will of any man or woman, not even ourselves. We exist completely, utterly, and wholly in and by and for that love which spoke us and all creation into, begin into existence in the beginning. That love is our source and it is our destination. It is indelibly who we are, who we always have been. We may have forgotten that, but it is no less true. This love is our true humanity. That's the humanity of Christ. I believe that this is God's manifesto written in flesh, delivered of a woman, acclaimed by angels, attested by shepherds, crucified and risen and with us always, even to the end of the age. To be human is to be a son, a daughter, a child of God. Jesus isn't the exception, he's the rule. More than a king or a lord or a master, he's our brother. And in case we might doubt this truth or misunderstand it or ignore it, this truth takes on our flesh and blood in the incarnation and then offers it back to us at this table so that we might take on his flesh and blood. In Jesus, God again becomes incarnate in us, and we become incarnate in God, finally becoming who we truly are. <clears throat> I mean this not to say that we are gods, but that God is alive in us. Like John, we are not the light, but the light is our life. We shine with the light that is life, created by God at the beginning, just as we always have. The reflection of God's glory, the exact imprint of God's very being, written on us as our humanity, as our flesh, our essence, our life. We reject this glory. We deny this imprint. And so we do not accept Jesus but if we trust that what he says is true, that he is the truth, 
then we cannot deny who we are, that we are children of God. This is the foundation of our faith. From this truth, all other truths flow. All the commandments, all our doctrines and dogmas, all our guidelines for right living or doing justice or practicing mercy, everything ever spoken by the prophets flows from this reality and points back to it. Humanity and all creation are the beloved children of the loving parent. We are begotten and born of love. In love, we live and move and have our being. And to love, we are all destined to return. This life is most fully lived in the light of this truth. A truth which lives and walks and celebrates and sorrows and even dies among us in Jesus. A truth which is always reborn because it cannot truly die. On this Christmas morning, as we celebrate the love of God coming to birth, we celebrate its birth in ourselves as well. We bear witness with John to the light coming into the world, wearing our flesh. Once again, we behold God's embodied incarnate word, God's love among us, all around us.